one byte just isn't enough. And three bytes is probably too many. Even if your holiday party is just for two people this year, the number of bytes in your appetizers needs to be just right. And that's why we're talking about the five categories of two bite appetizers today on the Carefree Cooks Code. I'm Chef Todd Moore, and this is the Carefree Cooks Code every Tuesday live at noon Eastern. Here's our challenge. How can home cooks cook freely with creativity, confidence, and pride while ignoring recipes and still impressing themselves and others with what they cook? Well, the answer is found in becoming empowered with how cooking works, using dependable and repeatable methods of cooking that work for any ingredient, for any diet, and any desire, just like chefs do. And we'll know we've cracked it when everyone sees cooking as an exciting and rewarding way to improve their relationships, their lifestyles, and their health through better food and cooking. This is the Carefree Cooks Code. Hey, welcome back to the Carefree Cooks Code, everyone. Uh, This is the weekly show for the methods, the techniques, the insights into better food and cooking. And of course, we're live every Tuesday at noon Eastern. If you're looking for past videos, go to facebook.com slash chef.todd.more slash videos. That's where the archive is. And, uh, oh, no Instagram post yet. Uh, But if you want to see nice pictures of food, go to instagram.com slash chef.todd.more because I'm a carefree cook. I create my own recipes. I bring friends and family together. I learn every time I cook. I create my own cooking style because I practice pro methods and I wind up loving my cooking. Hey everybody, uh, it's the most wonderful cooking time of the year. Uh, You've heard me say that before. Uh, It's when people get in the kitchen that maybe don't all year long. And even if you aren't gonna have a big audience for your holiday party this year, things still being pared down a little bit, uh, you can still be proud of the appetizers you create. Even if it's just for the two of us, heck, like Heather and I this year. Uh, We're going to have some great holiday appetizers, even though there's only two of us. So maybe the last three weeks of the year is where you can really impress yourself. Pull out all the things that you've learned this year. Uh, Demonstrate your carefree cooking skills that you've been honing over the past 12 months with a fantastic end of the year holiday appetizer party. And you don't need more than one person to create and enjoy great food. Only takes one person (laughs) to do that. If you got two, then that's twice as as good. And if you wanna make this whole event even fancier, don't call it appetizers, call it hors d'oeuvres instead, if you like, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. But first, whoa, uh, first I've got the what am I for you today. It's a holiday inspired what am I. There are the ingredients. What does all that stuff add up to? It looks like some, ooh, what's that? Ooh, bourbon some bourbon in there as well. Tell me in the comment section below, please, what am I is uh, what we're looking for. What do those ingredients make? Uh, Okay, so before I forget, let me wish everyone a happy holidays. Merry Christmas to everyone. Happy Hanukkah, which is past. Happy Kwanzaa. Um, Happy universe. I don't know. Happy winter solstice. No matter the source of your happiness and your appreciation, I wish you more of it. Okay, so... I wanna challenge you um, to take a few minutes every day and and think about, uh, celebrate your life. Think about the things that you can be grateful for. I mean, yeah, there, there's a lot of bad in the world right now, but focusing on that does not improve your life. So this is the time for us all to think about how fortunate we are, no matter how you define your fortune. Just take a minute and and find that small thing that you can draw close to your heart. And that's why I think you should throw yourself an appetizer party, right? We'll bring that full circle. All right, so I'm here to give you the five categories of hors d'oeuvres so you can amaze yourself with the variety that you cook just for yourself. So it's going to be a big pat on the back this week. And uh, what we're talking about really is hors d'oeuvres, whether cold or hot, they're, they're small portions of food that you serve before the meal to stimulate the appetite. That's the whole idea. The, the French term hors d'oeuvre roughly translates as outside the work. And its usage uh, was correct 
under the classical kitchen brigade system because it was the service staff's responsibility to prepare small little tidbits for the guests uh, while the kitchen staff prepared the meal. So the, the kitchen staff w would uh, would kind of uh, have the bits and pieces, the, the trimmings of things. And it was actually up to the waiters in a classical brigade system to come up with something to bring out to the diners before the chef was done cooking. And they're generally a first course or introduction to a meal. They're, they're more typically served um, with dinner than with lunch. You really don't have lunch appetizers, right? You might have brunch appetizers, but Preparing hors d'oeuvres and appetizers uses, uses skills from almost every section of the kitchen. I mean, because they can consist of meat and poultry and fish and uh, shellfish. Uh, appetizers can have vegetables and potatoes, grains, uh, pasta appetizers, fruits, baked goods. They have sauces on them. So. I mean, all these things really do require a working knowledge of these foods and the way they prepared. I don't know how you trust this to a waiter, <laughs> to be honest with you. The waiters I met, I wouldn't trust them to make appetizers for my diners because it does take all of those skills. You think just putting together a two bite appetizer might be really simple, but it's not. If you want to do it well, you need all those skills. And really there are only two limitations on the type of food and the manner of presentation that you can use for your two bite, bite hors d'oeuvres, the chef's imagination and the foods you have at his or her disposal because everything is possible when you're talking about two bite appetizers because there are no rules, but there are a few guidelines to follow. So let's go over them today. The guidelines for preparing hors d'oeuvres. First of all, they should be small, two bites, one, like I said, is usually not enough. You just put it in your mouth and you go, mm, 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 mm. can't really taste it. Three, you start to get toward fork and knife territory. You want to stay away from fork and knife because at a party, you can't balance it on your knee while you're cutting this thing. Two bites is perfect. They should be flavorful, well seasoned, not overpowering. Don't give someone a, a ghost pepper, <laughs> you know, shrimp ball or something that's going to shut their taste buds down for the rest of the meal. They should be visually attractive as well. They should look really, really good. Now's the time to express your art. But most importantly, I think they should complement the foods that are about to follow without duplicating the flavors. So if you're serving shrimp, don't give them shrimp appetizer, but give them something that will complicate that, uh, complement that, not complicate it. All right, so let's talk about the five categories of hors d'oeuvres or appetizers. And again, this is all meant for me not to give you a recipe today. I'm not cooking anything today. I haven't cooked anything on a Tuesday since we started this in late 2017. What I'm giving you today is the ideas that you can then take into the kitchen, use the ingredients that are right for your diet, your desires, or just what you have in your pantry. All right. So first let's talk about filled pastry shells. This is uh, one of the most uh, easily uh, changeable variable. Uh, you can put a lot of uh, different varieties on it and you can use savory, which is unsweetened, uh, tarts, tartlets, uh, pat a shoe puff, uh, the, the beignets uh, uh, dough, um, the things that I've taught you in the last weeks or so, um, or just other small dough products, you know, rip rolls in half, uh, use muffin cups, uh, wonton wrappers, uh, egg roll wrappers, phyllo dough that we're going to be using on Saturday, things like that. Um, it's really something that you want to bake to remove the moisture content so it gets nice and crunchy. Then you fill it with warm meats, poultry, fish purees, ragu, um, garnish it, serve it hot or cold. But be careful though, anytime you have something crispy that you fill, it becomes soggy very, very quickly. So be prepared. <laughs> they should be prepared as closely uh, to service as possible because otherwise they get really soggy. Uh, here's some examples of the things I used to do for my catering company. These were um, mini chicken cornucopia. Uh, so we used to take uh, tortillas, corn tortillas, and uh, with a cookie cutter, cut rounds out of these tortillas. So we got these little tiny tortillas that were only about this big. Julienne strip of red pepper, julienne strip of green pepper, julienne strip of onion, um, a strip of chicken, and I think hot sauce in there. And then we rolled it into a cone kind of thing. 
beautiful appetizer because sticking out of the top of the cone uh, was red, green, white, piece of chicken, a little bit of the sauce. We would bake them off to get them really crispy. Great idea for that. Mini uh, tortilla shells. Uh, this is my chicken. Um, those are my early skills in carving a chicken. These are chicken salad puffs. Uh, these are store-bought uh, phyllo dough cups. Make some chicken salad or any kind of shrimp salad, protein salad. Fill them with cups and carve yourself a a chicken for the middle of the platter. Uh, my most popular appetizer every year in my catering company, the mini chicken wellingtons. Uh, this is a, a puff pastry dough with uh, sauteed chicken, uh, mushroom duck cell, deglazed in sherry wine. They're really, really good. Okay, so all examples of how you can take some kind of dough and then fill it with things. The second are brochettes, skewers, kebabs. Excuse me for a minute. Um, these are small skewers that hold any combination of meat or poultry, of game, uh, fish, shellfish, vegetables, anything, skewer things. They're normally baked, grilled, uh, broiled. Really, they meet most cooking methods. You can even steam them like bamboo steamer, and then you serve it with a dipping sauce. Um, soaking your wooden skewers ahead of time can help slow down the burning. I usually like metal skewers if you can find them, but it's a really good uh, way to have an appetizer that is two bites that somebody can hold in their hand that they don't need a knife and fork for. Let's see some examples. Oh, a caprice salad, a little cherry tomatoes, a little mozzarella cheese, and skewered with basil. A little caprice salad, that's really nice. A skewered shrimp in any kind of way, any culture. Um, I like to do garlic shrimp, the Spanish garlic shrimp that I, I picked up when I was in Spain, and skewer just one shrimp or two shrimp on the skewer as well. Um, any kind of meats can be uh, needled through. That's the thing about skewers. Be careful about just putting the item through because as it cooks, you ever see things that get loose, especially mushrooms or things that lose a lot of water. You always want to uh, like darning needle it up down in run it through in a weavy pattern and it'll stay on your screw or a little bit uh, longer uh, the third are meatballs and meatballs don't have to be meat uh, it's really just a bound item you can certainly do tofu balls i've done paneer balls but you can make them from ground beef veal pork poultry um, serve it in a sauce, buffet style, like Swedish meatballs in, a, in your crock pot, or go back and skewer your meatballs like we showed you. Um, fish and shellfish can also be bound with egg whites or a velouté sauce. Um, one of the most popular things that I used to do many years ago was a fish meatball. Um, so you take shrimp, crab, flounder, and you bind it with egg whites and, and then uh, cook them off or steam them. Uh, it turns out really, really good. Uh, here's some of the examples of the things that I used to do. A crab cake is a meatball, if you will, just kind of squished. These were the famous meatballs from my catering company. That sauce, Chef Greg used to make that sauce, and I can barely remember what it was, honey honey mustard remoulade, something like that with pecans in it. It was outrageous. Chef Greg, uh, everybody. Um, uh, Swedish meatballs we talked about, uh, uh, also a really good idea. And you get yourself little uh, uh, wooden forks or something, you can dress it up a little bit and do individually skewered meatballs that way, okay? So it doesn't have to be ground beef to be meatballs. It can be, um, heck, mushrooms that are bound together with egg whites or some kind of binder. Uh, the fourth is rumaki. Now, traditionally, rumaki were uh, wrapping uh, chicken livers in bacon, and then you either broil them or roast them. Today, uh, you can do a lot of other foods with rumaki. Um, Oh, geez. For example, uh, you know, well, first of all, blanch the bacon first. A lot of people make this mistake that they, they like wrap a, a scallop in bacon and the scallop is so much more tender. That thing is going to cook way before the bacon does. So you really have to par cook your bacon. But uh, how about around olives if you like olives? Um, how about two or three asparagus? put together, steamed with some bacon around it, uh, water chestnuts and bacon, a pineapple and bacon. How about little skewers of, of pineapple and some cooked bacon? You start to play with the sweet and savory. Uh, try Italian meats like uh, prosciutto or, or salami can also be used in the same way to wrap something around as well. Um, uh, uh, ham and cheese sticks I've done before with something wrapped around them. 
Look at some ideas here. Um, there it is, bacon, uh, water chestnuts, I think, and bacon in that picture. Uh, here is uh, jalapeno poppers, another a rumaki type thing, jalapeno poppers, and shrimp wrapped with bacon in individual dishes uh, that are then broiled off. Uh, a rumaki type thing that I do is a stuffed shrimp with crab meat. When you butterfly the shrimp in, in a certain way, you can put some crab meat and then fold the tail over on top. That's in the rumaki category as well. Uh, let's move on to stuffed uh, wonton skins or stuffed things. Uh, wonton skins are basically Asian noodle dough uh, that's flat, you know, not cut into strips. And you can produce a wide variety of hors d'oeuvres. You could do little miniature egg rolls or egg roll puffs in a, a mini uh, muffin tin with cream cheese and crab. Um, you can fill them with anything that your creativity allows. And then the wonton skins or the egg roll skins or the phyllo dough like we'll do on Saturday or any substitution that you want, you can then pan fry them, uh, you can uh, deep fry them, none of which I like. You can steam them for dumplings. You can even put them on an oiled sheet pan and put them in the oven. So uh, some ideas around that. Um, fill wontons with anything you want. I mean, any combination of, of meats, of fish. Um, I like to go Asian route usually with shrimp and green onions. Uh, maybe put a duck sauce in there, like a sweet and sour kind of thing. Here's what I was talking about with the muffin cups. You can push wonton down in there as well and create a little cuff. And we, we just saw the, the jalapeno <laughs> poppers a minute ago. Um, but you can do that in a uh, a mini cup as well. It doesn't have to be rumaki style. In the cup, uh, jalapeno there, uh, cheese on top of it any way that you want. And then from there, it's I mean, it's endless others, right? Category number six is phyllo dough. You're going to see us work with that. Uh, uh, wrap it around vegetables. Uh, how about uh, using mushroom caps? Mushroom caps with spinach, mushroom caps with sausage, uh, mushroom caps with cheese is pretty endless. Uh, you can get those tiny little red potatoes, the red bee potatoes, steam them, scoop them out a little bit, uh, fill it with caviar, uh, or sour cream, uh, roquefort cheese, any kind of uh, uh, blue cheese with walnuts. I mean, you just, you just start rifting on it, right? Uh, how about artichoke hearts? Um, oyster shells, clam shells filled with, with fish or cheese or baked clams even that I do with the holidays can be considered a rumaki as well because they're in the clamshell. So really the secret to great hors d'oeuvres is, is to let your imagination be your guide. You know, keep the ingredients harmonious and if the hors d'oeuvres are to precede the dinner, don't allow them to duplicate the foods that are already being served. Don't allow them to overpower with excessively spicy flavors. They should be relatively mild. So for me to provide a comprehensive list of every hors d'oeuvre, every appetizer would really be impossible. That's why I tried to bring it down into categories. That way when you see a category, then you can think about the ingredients that you like and then you can use that category. You can stuff it, you can roll it, <laughs> you can skewer it, you can make a meatball out of it and really, with the global availability of food items, with the new products coming out all the time, with your creativity getting better and better and better this year, this really gives you license to create anything that you can think up. And this holiday season, you know, let's, let's not let the holiday spirit fade just because we can't be at a big party. Maybe we're still missing loved ones very much. You know, let, let's find a new way to appreciate. Let, let, let's find a new way to impress ourselves with great food and the pride in having cooked it. That's the gift you give to yourself when you do this, is the pride. And if you make up some new appetizers this year, you know, maybe it's a new tradition for next year. And the idea here is that you take one of the five categories of appetizers, you use the ingredients that are right for your diet or desires. That's what we'll be talking about. All right, uh, let's get back to the what am I here. Yeah, anything with bourbon in it, I probably like. Uh, and if you put together egg, bourbon, sugar, cream, a little bit of nutmeg, what do you get? Yeah, you get eggnog. Today's what am I is eggnog. If you uh, wrote eggnog, Make yourself one. You deserve it. And also, if you know somebody who's having a two-bite holiday, <laughs> it wants to put more two-bite into their holiday party, 
um, and that create things that makes them proud and happy, please like, love, share this video with them so they can have a better holiday season too. Um, <laughs> I can't believe this is finally happening. I, it, <laughs> I'm really excited about it. It's it's a dream come true for me, and it, and it's finally here. Heather and I have been working on this for so long. It it is our first truly interactive live carefree cooks lab, and the lab stands for Learn, Act, Become. Because here's the thing: I have felt that something is missing. For the longest time, I've felt something is missing. I've had this feeling that I need to serve you at an even higher level. And, and after 13 years, one-way videos are, aren't enough. Even when we're together live and chatting, it's still not enough. And this is what Heather and I have been working so hard on lately. It's a whole new concept in online cooking. We're going to be on Zoom so you can talk to me as well, finally. You can talk to me as well. So go to webcookingclasses.com slash lab. This is a premium level class with a tuition charge. Uh, so it is a charged class, but you can see everything that's included. This is taking place this Saturday at noon Eastern time. Oh, and if you picked up a golden ticket as one of your free bonuses during my Cyber Week sale, I've really got some good news for you. Your golden ticket has already been redeemed for free admission to this event. So if you have a golden ticket, check your email for the private classroom link from Zoom uh, that was sent to you. That, that's gonna be your admission to the class. So this Saturday at noon Eastern, we're gonna be cooking live together on Zoom. And if you wanna get involved in this brand new type event, it's webcookingclasses.com slash lab. So until then, uh, we'll see a, a lot of you on Saturday, and I'm looking really looking forward to hearing your voices, <laughs> hearing your questions. Uh, until next Tuesday, this is Chef Todd Moore reminding you, of course, there's a method to your cooking success. Bye, everyone.